This is part two of Blood Raven. In part one, we discuss Brendan Rivers or Blood Raven's early life all the way up to Darren II's death in 209 AC. After his death, Darren II's brother, Ares I, would then come to the throne. Ares I would make Blood Raven, his uncle and a prominent figure at court, his hand. This greatly angered Ares' first brother, Makar, who thought he should have the honor. Makar would refuse to be part of Ares I's council and would depart King's Landing. Why Ares I chose Blood Raven over Makar is a bit of a mystery, but Maesters believe that Ares I turned Blood Raven because of the problems in the realm. The Great Spring Sickness had just devastated the Seven Kingdoms. Dagon Greyjoy, Lord of the Iron Islands, was reaving up and down the Sunset Sea's coast and Bittersteel plotted against the crown with Daemon's sons in Essos. However, others say that Bloodraven's rise to power was the shared love between Ares I and Bloodraven, their love of arcane lore and ancient history, as it was generally known that Bloodraven studied the higher mysteries. During his time as Hannah the King, Bloodraven would prove himself a valuable asset in some areas. Bloodraven believed it was better to be frightening than frightened, and he would put that belief into action. With his paramour, Shira Seastar, it was rumored they used sorcery to learn secrets, and Bloodraven became known as the Master of Whispers. This was greatly needed, as after the Great Spring Sickness, a drought that lasted over a year came, and many blamed the King and Bloodraven. Some brothers, knights, and lords whispered of treason, and that Daemon Blackfire's surviving sons should take Ares the first place on the throne. With the help of Bloodraven's spy network, Bloodraven would be able to mostly keep control. This would also create a saying. How many eyes does Bloodraven have? A thousand eyes in one. No one ever knew who was a spy of Bloodraven, and neighbors began to turn on each other. Unlike in Darren the Second's day, many claimed under Ares the First rule, because of Bloodraven, they feared speaking their mind, never knowing who was listening or if they would be punished for doing so. Bloodraven's reputation in general at this time wouldn't be the best. Many believed Bloodraven enchanted Ares the First bending the king to his will and making him his creature. A Septon would remark, Make no mistake, tis Lord Rivers who rules us with his spells and spies. There is no one to oppose him. Prince Makar sulks at Summerhall, nursing his grievances against his royal brother. Prince Regal is as meek as he is mad, and his children are, well, children. Friends and favorites of Lord Rivers fill every office. The lords of the small council lick his hand, and this new Grand Maester is as steeped in sorcery as he is. The Red Keep is garrisoned by Raven's teeth, and no man sees the king without his leave. Though Bloodraven would use his spy network and opposing figure to keep peace in the Seven Realms, at least in the area of making sure a rebellion against the Crown didn't crop up, it didn't always work. When the drought hit, small folk by the thousands took to the road, looking for where the rain was falling. Bloodraven would command them to return to their own lords and lands, but few would obey. And despite the first Blackfire Rebellion failing, and Bloodraven attempting to keep another from starting with a spy network, people would still preach rebellion, crying out that Bloodraven's hands were scarlet with his brother's blood and his young nephews, that he had cursed the realm, and that the true king, Daemon Blackfire, may be dead, but his sons across the narrow sea must come to the realm and save it. Bloodraven wouldn't execute everyone that spoke of rebellion, but ones that posed a greater threat to the peace and openly preached rebellion would often be executed for treason, no matter their station. Because of these talks, and believing Bittersteel would strike again, Bloodraven would keep his eyes on Tyrosh where the Blackfires and their men had gathered, and he would keep the king's ships close in case they planned to cross. This would prove hurtful to the realm when in 211 AC, Dagon Greyjoy would terrorize the coast of the Sunset Sea. After much suffering and Bloodraven unwilling to use the king's ships, House Stark and House Lannister would both do their part to rid the coast of Iron Men. It is believed the Targaryens did eventually intervene, however. But this isn't the only time we hear a Bloodraven ignoring the suffering of the small folk or lords as the hand of the king. We get a sense that Bloodraven as hand wasn't overly concerned with the small folk, or the internal conflicts within the realm. He would hear of fights between lords breaking out, and Bloodraven would do nothing to fix them or settle them. He appeared to be more preoccupied with preventing a rebellion against the crown. This alertness and his spies proved wise when Lord Peak and Lord Butterwell worked together to bring Daemon's son, Daemon the Younger, 
and Blackfire supporters all in one place under the guise of celebrating Lord Butterwell's marriage and compete in a tournament in 211 AC at White Walls. Most invited had fought for Damon Blackfire once, and the rest had their own reasons to resent Blood Raven's rule, nurse grievances, or had ambitions of their own. Most of the men had fought on the side of Damon Blackfire and had given up hostages to King's Landing to ensure their future loyalty. But with the Great Spring Sickness, most of these hostages had perished, and those men's hands were no longer tied. Luckily, Blood Raven had informants amongst them, and before the Second Blackfire Rebellion could begin, Blood Raven turned up outside the White Walls with his own hosts. The men would surrender without a fight, but Damon the Younger would ride out alone and challenge Blood Raven to single combat. Blood Raven would instead have his men surround the Pretender, pull him off his horse, and put him in chains. He would have Damon's banner planted in the ground and burned. Blood Raven would keep Damon the Younger alive, knowing he had four younger brothers, and should he execute the man, the next brother in line would simply take up the crown as the next Blackfire King. As long as Damon lived, the next Blackfire King couldn't be made. Hating how the Redgrass Field became a monument to the Black Dragon, with people planting flowers on the spot Damon the Blackfire fell, Blood Raven would have white walls torn down and the land sowed with salt. Despite sparing Damon the Younger, he would die a few years later, and the Third Blackfire Rebellion would break out in 219 AC, with Hagon, the next eldest son of Damon Blackfire I, taking up the crown. Blood Raven would fight for the Targaryens once more, even dueling with Bittersteel again, and the Blackfires would be defeated a third time. Hagon I would die, and Bittersteel would finally be taken prisoner. Blood Raven pushed for his execution, but Ares I spared his life, and instead allowed Bittersteel to take the Black. Bittersteel's ship would be intercepted on the way to the Wall, and he would go back to Essos to crown the next Blackfire, Daemon Blackfire III, Hagon I's son. After Ares I died in 221 AC, his brother Magar I would come to the throne, and Blood Raven would remain as Hand of the King. When Magar I died during battle in 233 AC, Blood Raven elected to call a great council to decide who should rule next. A few claims came for the throne, including one from Aenys Blackfire, the fifth son of Daemon Blackfire. Aenys wrote from his exile in Tyrosh, putting forth his claim. Blood Raven, worried about the consequences of leaving Aenys Blackfire alive, promised him safe conduct to come to King's Landing to present his claim in person. It was a trap, and the moment Aenys entered the city, Gold Cloak seized him and executed him. His head was then presented to the Lords of the Great Council, a warning for anyone who still supported the Blackfires. This move would only harden the resolve of the Blackfires and their supporters across the Narrow Sea. Aegon V was decided to be the next king, and when he came to the throne, the first act of his rule was to arrest Blood Raven, the hand of the king, for this treachery. Blood Raven admitted to lying to Aenys Blackfire, but claimed he had sacrificed his own honor for the good of the realm. Though many were pleased with Blood Raven's actions, Aegon V couldn't let it go unpunished. Otherwise, it would look like the crown's word was worthless. Aegon V gave Blood Raven the option to take the Black instead of execution, which he took, and in 233 AC, he sailed for the Wall along with 200 men, many of them archers from the Raven's Teeth. Maester Aemon, Aegon V's brother, was also among them. Whether Blood Raven took the Sword Dark Sister with him is not known, and the sword's whereabouts is also not known. Blood Raven, always a capable man, would rise to become Lord Commander of the Night's Watch in 239 AC. However, he would disappear during a ranging beyond the Wall in 252 AC. We would later discover that Blood Raven did not die in 252 AC, but is still alive as the Three Eyed Crow, the last Green Seer living in a cave beyond the Wall with the Children of the Forest. While this isn't 100% confirmed, there is enough evidence that this is almost universally accepted by readers. The Three-Eyed Crow would enter the dreams of at least two characters in the books, Bran Stark and Jojen Reed, and when Bran finally finds him, his body would be useless, with most of him gone into a tree. At this stage in his life, he does not require food or drink. He simply sleeps, dreams, and watches. One of the children of the forest, Leaf, would explain that he lingers on despite living past his mortal span, and that only a little strength remains in his flesh. What the Three-Eyed Crow's plans are for Bran are to be seen. Other theories on Blood Raven, including him controlling Lord Mormont's Raven, and whether he was disguised at the tourney where the Second Blackfire Rebellion was being plotted, will be discussed in later videos. 
Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. It helps the video out a bunch. Stark month begins in March.